Right, so I thought I'd talk about the brain and sort of the age at which it stops developing itself. So right off the bat, let's just talk about this really directly. The, the brain is a very complicated thing, so we don't really fully understand the brain. But what we do know so far is that at the ages between 25 and 35, your brain will stop developing in terms of like a physical thing. But that doesn't mean that you stop developing neural connections. And this is a really important thing to understand, especially if you want to change or improve any part of yourself. So the way it works in a word is called neuroplasticity. This means the, it's the idea that your neural connections can change or be adapted over time, depending on which ones you use the most. This is a fundamental concept, which is it's massively important for anything you want to achieve in life. Basically, in, in layman's terms, the things that you do the most, your, your brain will strengthen those connections and make them easier to use. The things that you don't do as often, your connections will get weaker and it'll become harder to do those things. This is at the basis of all sort of habit building, habit forming uh, and life changing things. Is this, this idea that the things that you do often become easier and you, can, you become better at them and the things you do less often become harder and you become worse at them. So say if you're trying to give up smoking, right? The, the only thing you need to concentrate on doing, obviously, is not smoking, right? But every time that you have a relapse and have that last cigarette again, you're just strengthening the neural connections, making it even harder to give up when you next try and give up, or, you know, the next time. No matter what you're trying to achieve, whether it's trying to give up a bad habit or establish a new positive habit, You've got to understand that this idea of neural connections is really powerful. So the things, the things that you do often, your brain will literally make those connections stronger. So all you need to do is focus on doing small things every day that you want to become good at. If you want to become fluent in language, or if you want to become you know, the next world-class athlete, obviously that takes a lot more work than becoming fluent in a language. But the point is that if you focus on doing things every single day, over time, the, the results that you're going to get are going to be astounding because your, your brain will form much stronger connections fairly quickly. Your brain is very liquid and transient and you can easily change the connections if you just do something repeatedly every single day. Now, how this relates to lucid dreaming is that you're, at the moment, if you're a beginner and if you've never done this, your neural connections for lucid dreaming and for self-awareness will be very weak. And that's why it's difficult for you, because you're forming a new habit. Any new habit is hard to form. So when you're a beginner, you need to focus on making sure that you're consistent with your efforts. You can't just do this, you can't just do this like over a weekend or just one time. You need to make sure you do these things every single day from now on. Otherwise, every day that you don't do these things, and I'm going to get onto what things you need to practice in a minute, but every day you don't do these things, you're going to become even weaker at lucid dreaming and it's going to become even harder to get there. So what things do I mean? Well, if you do reality checks every day, if you write your dreams down every morning, and if you constantly meditate in the morning as soon as you wake up, this is going to strengthen those neural connections associated with remembering your dreams, being self-aware, and realising and recognising when you're in a dream. This is neuroplasticity at its finest. All you need to do is those things every single day. If you do them every single day, and if you make sure you put in the effort to do these, these, even though they're small things, if you make sure to put in the effort to do them every single day, you're gonna become better at the thing. You're gonna become a lucid dreamer, and the neural connections in your brain will physically rewire themselves to make it easier for you. All you need to do is just commit to those tiny micro actions every single day, and your brain will do the rest. And then suddenly in a year's time, you'll look back on today, and you'll think, how did I ever find it so difficult? What was I doing? And all you were doing is just not doing the small tasks every day. You just weren't building the neural connection. And once you've built this connection, guys, once you've actually trained your brain to have a certain neural pathway, whether it's for lucid dreaming, giving up smoking, establishing a good habit, or waking up early, whatever it is, your brain will work with you, and it will make it so much easier for you that eventually you won't even need to try. You won't even need to attempt to get out of bed early because you'll already be doing it automatically. It'll be in your memory, in your muscle memory. You won't even need to think about whether you're going to smoke or not because you won't even, the idea won't even cross your mind if you've eliminated that habit. And it's the same with lucid dreaming. Eventually, you won't even need to think about doing reality checks. You'll just constantly be on the lookout for things that are strange or you'll constantly be critical and, and aware of the world that you're in 
to the point where you'll have natural spontaneous lucid dreams. And you've probably heard of those, those lucky people who claim that they're just natural lucid dreamers. Well, they're probably not lucky in that sense. They're probably just, they've probably just over the, you know, a long period of time done those things without thinking about it. They've probably done things like consider what their dreams are at the very least, or, you know, write their dreams down. They've probably done things like constantly be aware for certain things. You'll find that the natural lucid dreamers or the spontaneous lucid dreamers, they are very critical as people. They're very aware and they sort of question things and they ask questions, they're curious. And that's all it is. It's not random. It's not, it's not natural in, in, a, in that sense of the word. It's just that they've been practicing those things and strengthening those neural pathways, whether it's for remembering dreams, being critical and aware of the world, or questioning things and being curious. These are the things that you know you, you should be doing if you want to lucid dream. So that's why these, these people are natural lucid dreamers. Anyway, I thought I would also mention my Patreon page, which is something I've completely neglected for a number of years. Basically, if you do enjoy this channel and if you're one of my regular viewers, I would highly encourage you to donate just a dollar a month and this will help me to produce better content for you or help to fund things like the new camera that I've, that I've got as well. Um, and it will just help to, it'll help to build the channel and give me more time to devote to you guys and answering questions, replying to comments, this sort of stuff. And it will help me just to know that you appreciate the content I make. Anyway, anyway, there's also a Udemy course. You can check out the link in the description if you, if you want to get started with lucid dreaming. I'd highly encourage you to check out the Udemy course, which is a video lesson series thing. I think that's about it for today, guys. Done.